Uh, today we're going to learn how to uh, construct a trackball mouse uh, using using curves, and it's an extension of our uh, lessons that we did earlier this week uh, using filleting as a as a mode of um, computer modeling. We're going to use curves to create our basic shape. We're going to refine the shape uh, using fillets and we're going to use projection curves to add details to our finished mouse object so that our results should look something like this. Okay, so as we look at our finished trackball mouse, uh, we'll see how we've uh, refined the surface of our mouse uh, that was generated from those basic curves, how we've added button details, how we've uh, created a proper cradle for our trackball so that it sits in a proper cradle for the trackball and also for our little scroll over here along the side, how that has a proper cradle uh, for that. And if you look at the edges, look at that, it's filleted. Even the smallest edges are filleted. Um, and this one's a combination of uh, blended surfaces, uh, different surfaces, uh, piping differences, and we're going to explore some of these techniques for um, adding detail to our basic uh, track mouse design. We're also going to learn how to extract curve information from our, our base surfaces. So this is, this, we're going to learn a lot during this tutorial. In this uh, part of the tutorial, now we're going to use uh, the curves that we uh, created during the last part of the tutorial to actually uh, generate surfaces. Okay, and the first surface that we're going to generate using our curves is a loft surface. So we type in the command loft in the command line and select the curves loft. One, two, three, and here we have a normal loft, okay? We have a normal loft. And let's look at some of the options so that we can see the different types of surfaces that we can generate. And let's also get into ghosted mode. Uh, let's get into ghosted mode here. Um, now, with a normal loft, sometimes the, uh, it tries to move the uh, object through the control points. Loose gives you a more loose fitting. It might not necessarily go through the control points of the curves. Tight makes it sure that it does go through the control points. I want you to click on close loft just for a section so that you can see what that looks like and hit preview. We notice that with a close loft it actually closes off the shape which might be kind of cool with this tutorial. Do you see that? it actually generates a bottom for you that's already uh, blended. Do you see that? Like, I could, I could work with that, actually. Um, uh, that's, that's tight. Uh, loose, let's do a preview. Loose, you notice that with loose, it doesn't go through the control points, or it goes through the control curves. It's a looser version of the loft. Here, normal. Do a preview. That's sort of like a normal one. Turn off close for a second. Preview. You always have to hit the preview when you change modes. It doesn't automatically update them. And straight sections gives you just straight sections. And if you were to do a closed and preview that, you get hard edges, hard straight sections through each one of your loft components. And that, and there are some times where that might be useful. Uh, and you have developable, which means that you will be able to um, create that using a piece of a uh, sheet material. And it shows you what that would look like. Uh, and you notice that you can't get a curvature, a curved surface that's developable out of a single sheet of material. This is the best that it could do there. And uniform uh, means that these are evenly spaced. Okay. Huh? I'm not getting Okay. And you have to run the command again. You have to go you have to go out and run the command again. 
Okay, so let's just go with normal for right now. And we'll go with this type of uh, surface. Although I have to admit, I really do like that uh, surface that's generated with the closed loft. And I would think about that because that kills a lot of birds with one stone doing that. Because that, get, that gets your bottom and your, and your top surface all done in one shot. And there's something nice about that. But for the benefit of this tutorial, we're, gonna, we're not going to close it off. We're going to go with just this basic loft surface. We're going to say, okay. I'm going to change the color of this layer to black just so that it's seen better on the screen as we're working. Okay, so now, now that we have this, let's uh, take our surface and let's create a new layer. We're going to call that layer top. And we're going to change our object layer. And we're going to call this layer um, up here. And let's change its color to... Uh, green for right now and we're going to call that layer curves because we're going to use those curves on that layer as we're as we're working um, on our on our object so now that we've uh, developed this surface right here now we can go in and we're going to take these two curves right here and we're going to join those together. Okay, and you'll see why we did that in a second. Okay, let's go now, let's change our view to our front window where we have something that looks like this and let's go to our top layer and we can turn off our curves right now or actually let's go to our curve layer. Let's make that the active layer. And what you want to do, you want to get your your curve tool and turn off the ortho snap, turn off any snaps that you may have. And you want to draw a shape that looks something like that. That does something that looks like that. And I'm going to change the color of this layer to black also so that we can see this clearly. And you can take this and hit F10 and you can adjust the location of some of these. to refine that curve if you wanted to continue our radical attitude about curves you could take that and turn on the uh, you could go down and get your curvature graph and you could adjust the control points on that curve to make it to make it nice and smooth like that that's like a nice smooth curve right and we could hit f f um, turn off our graph and hit f11 and now we just need to basically maybe perhaps move that up just a little bit like that so we have a nice smooth curve like that okay and so now What we're going to do, we're going to use our trim command, and we're going to use that curve that we just created as our cutting object. We're going to right-click to enter that, and we're going to get rid of the bottom part of our surface so that we get something that looks like that. Okay, so if we were to go to our perspective window, we'd have something that looks like that. Okay, you see that? Okay. Is everybody with me? Now, huh? Trim. Okay. Now, what we want to do, we want to create our bottom, right? But we we want what we want to do now. We want to take this curve on the bottom here, and let's go to our top view, and we want to create a offset. Okay, of that curve 
in here, and we want to bring it, and we want to use through point. And you want to bring in that offset curve inside of the curve that we just trimmed. Can you see how this is the curve that we just trimmed? And we want to make sure that this offset curve is inside of that one. Do you follow? Can you see that like that? And then I'll click like this, and it creates an offset surface inside there. You follow? Is it just offset or offset? It's offset. Okay, so we have our original curve. And this is the offset curve that we generated from that. Do you follow? Okay. Want me to do it again? Okay. So I'm going to go to my top window. I selected the uh, curve that we joined. And then I just go get my offset command. And I use the through point option because I want to do it interactively. Okay, because I really don't know. I really don't know how far I want to bring it in, and with the through point, it just moves that curve through this point. Okay, equidistant all the way around. Okay, do you follow that? How it's equidistant all the way around, but allows you to do it in an interactive manner. I want to give myself a little bit more area. I'll, I want to keep it a little tighter on the sides, like this. Okay, and let me look at that in perspective. Yeah, that's a little better, okay? And I want to make sure that that's on my, on my curve layer, okay? Now what I want to do, I want to turn on my end snap, and I want to get a straight line, and I want to go from there to there, and the front, and I want to go from there, and here, what I need, I want to snap to this point right here, and that looks like an intersection. So that I can snap this to that intersection. Okay? Now, what have I set up with, with those commands? What kind of surface did I, did I set up there? That's a sweep too, right? That's a sweep too. And actually, I didn't even need this one in the back. I could get rid of this one. Let's get rid of that one for right now. And we've set up a sweep too. Okay, so I'm going to come down here to the top layer. So I make this object on, on the top layer. I'm going to type in sweep two. First rail is up here. Second rail is down there. And this is my cross section curve. I'm going to press enter. Okay, and there we go. Okay. And that looks pretty clean. It's moving around there kind of nicely. And, it, and you get nice clean surfaces when you have parametized your, your curves properly. You get nice clean surfaces when you do that. Uh, if for some reason it wasn't uh, coming out really nice and clean, I could use my add slash command to like put a slash in between them to sort of refine the shape. Don't want to do that. Oh, that snapped all the way over there. Let me turn off that intersection. But you can use your add slash command to sort of refine the shape. But I don't need to do that. And hit enter. And you can always go back in and re refine and work on the shape as you're doing this and come back and then I'm going to click OK. And, th and this is a closed sweep. OK, it's a closed sweep. Whenever you have closed curves, produce closed sweeps. Open curves, produce open sweeps. And we have that. OK. The last step now in this development of our model is to do what? Take this curve right here, right? And we want to do a surface from planar curves and we get a flat surface like that. Okay? And at this point now, we can select this surface, this surface, that surface, and what are we going to do with those? Control J to join those together, and we have a inherent solid. Okay? Uh, 
surface planar curves. Whenever you have a flat curve and you want to turn it into a surface, it has to be flat. It's surface planar curves. Okay. And now we have an inherent solid. We could do our show edges. Check. And there are no naked edges, no non-manifold edges. That's a good surface. Now, and that's your basic form. That's the basic form of your mouse. Okay. Uh, and and note that, you know, it could be almost anything. You need three curves, right? That could be shaped however you want. You'll do a loft lofted surface between those. You can create a cut line uh, using another curved surface. Okay, uh, and then they can be joined together. Now let me show you a little trick here. Let's take this another step further, and let's do a, um, I'm going to explode these so that I have one, two, oops. Let me do a, um, I want to do this a different way. I want to, okay, there we go. I want to be right there. That's good, right there. That's where I want to be. I'm going to take this surface and hide it for a second. Okay. And I'm going to come back to this curve right here. And I'm going to uh, look at that in my front window. And what I'm going to do um, with this curve, I'm going to, so this is my cross-section curve. Right? This is my uh, cross-section curve. And I'm going to do an F10. Huh? Uh, no, I hid that. I hid the middle section. So if I look at it in perspective, it looks like that. Okay. I just, I just. Um, but I'm going to come to my front window, and I'm going to redraw this curve. Okay. And I'm going to start here. I'm going to turn on my ortho snap, like this. Right. What's that going to do by doing that? That's going to give me continuity, right, through that point, right? If I wanted to really bring it home, I could turn on my auto snap again and add another one, right? Now I really got continuity, right? Now I'm going to turn off my auto snap. I'm going to come down here like this. And I'm going to snap here. And I'm going to snap there, right? And now I can hit F10. And I'm going to adjust the shape of this curve. Okay. Now, not only am I going to adjust the shape of that curve, right? I'm going to come in with my circle tool. And I'm going to add a circle in here. Right there. And I'm going to take that. And I'm going to use that to trim. I'm going to trim out that section right there. Hit enter. And then I'm going to take these two curves right here. And I'm going to do another trim. I'm going to trim that out like that. And then I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to do a little fillet. I'm going to fill it those corners right there, right? And now I'm going to take all of this, join it together, and I've got a little, I don't like this. I, sh I should have like a better uh, uh, tangency there between these two. Let me adjust this one a little bit. This one's not... Uh, tangent to that curve. I'd have to look at. I have to look at uh, where the second point is on that one. I want. I want a, a slightly greater amount of tangency between those two curves. So to see how that flows a little bit nicer. Yes, P. Scott gets uh, maniacal with his curves. I spend most of my time when I'm modeling, getting my curves right. Because my curves are right and tight, everything else is right on too. And I'm going to uh, do a, one more thing. I'm going to project this to the C plane. Uh, and that makes sure that it's on the, when I look at it, 
it's right there on that construction plane. So now I can come in and do a sweep two. First rail, second rail, cross section curve, and check that out. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Check that out. And so there, you see how you could, you, you have two surfaces that are almost blended together, that are blended together properly. That's blended together properly. And you have this nice inset surface here, a notch already in there that's nice and blended properly. So you can see how using your sweep command and your curves, how you can create details for your, for your model that you don't have to uh, use all these other modeling techniques to achieve down the line. So almost anything that you can do, anytime you can do something at the curve level, it's a good thing, especially when you consider that sometimes at the curve level, you can also use your record history command when you generate the surface. So if you want to change it, you can go back and change the shape profile of the curve, and it'll update the surface to, 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 um, to, re to reflect that information. And the uh, next part of the tutorial, what we're going to do is that we're going to talk about how we can begin to detail the surface by adding buttons and dividing the surface and adding, adding details which, uh, which enhance our, our basic model.